um, it, it forces you to be a little more aggressive uh, than you normally would. Of course, when you're getting paid every two weeks, <laughs> you may or may not be working in your cubicle those yeah. whole eight hours. Yeah. Um, when you're owning your own business, you're, you're working a lot of hours. You're working potentially over the weekend, overnight. Yeah. Um, you're doing whatever it takes. Um, I had to learn how to time manage better. Um, I did a lot of classes in terms of making sure I'm, what gener revenue generating activities am I doing during the day mm -hmm. so I can do my admin stuff late afternoon or in the evenings or the weekends okay. um, and staying focused and disciplined with that because you could very easily start clicking around on your computer and, just be, uh, and be, oh, well, let me, uh, is that generating <laughs> revenue? <laughs> Everybody out there in eye to eye and I did into invention podcast land. This is Garrett coming to you from our podcast studios. Kind of feeling, not feeling slighted, but uh, my partner in crime is not with me today. Sita, and shout out to my my lovely wife Sita. She uh, is just not available. <laughs> But that's okay. We're going to move on and, and have a, a really good time in uh, this next podcast session. Um, we actually have the privilege of having Miss um, Nichelle Jones here with us today. Okay. Yay, Nichelle. Nichelle. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give a little readout on who Nichelle is, and then she'll if, be so kind to dive in and give us a little bit more meat about who she is and, okay. and where, where we'll start in this first segment of our, our podcast. So, Nichelle um, has, uh, is, a, is the owner, president, and managing broker of Jones Health and Benefits. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and as healthcare benefits expert and as licensed agent, she has over 20 years of benefits administration and design experience with insurance carriers benefits, uh, brokerages, and uh, human resource departments. In addition to her years of experience, mm -hmm. she holds an industry designation as a registered health underwriter, mm -hmm. a Master of Arts in Organizational Management from the University of Phoenix, and a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from Kent State University. Yes. The MAC. Woo! Right. I, That's right. The MAC conversation. <laughs> oh, you didn't know we had that yeah, in common. Okay. See? <laughs> I, yes. I went to Ball State my, uh, okay, my freshman year to play okay. football. Okay. So, see, All right. Look at this. Look at what God going to do. <laughs> yes. So um, mm -hmm. just so that our audience knows, right? Mm -hmm. So for Idea to Invention, mm -hmm. we like to bring in um, industry expertise to help those who are in the process of whether they have an idea um, and they want to take that idea all the way to a, a tangible service or product and then build a business around mm -hmm. that, right? And so it's a small business type of community okay. that we typically reach out to um, and small business enthusiasts. And so we knew that we had to bring in someone to speak to the insurance side of mm -hmm. the world when it comes to business. Yes. And so <laughs> thank God we found you and yes. You can share us some of your expertise as we get further into our conversation about okay. that. Okay. But before we do that, give us who Miss Nichelle Jones is. Okay. Well, um, I am a humble little small business owner. It'll be celebrating 10 years in July. And um, I basically kind of launched my business based because I didn't want to return to corporate America, really. Mm. Um, if, you, if you've been through the interview process many times before, you get those wonderful personality tests. And one of the things that always would come back would be business owner, entrepreneur. Yeah. That's one of those ideal uh, career paths. Yeah. And um, so after being laid off, uh, fresh from vacation, um, basically had to make a decision on either returning to corporate America mm -hmm. or starting off on my own. Okay. And um, so 
as I spent more and more time on the business and less time interviewing and applying for jobs, this is where I am today. Wow. <laughs> so see. Mm -hmm. Michelle, you just see, you don't, you, there is so much connecting you and I today <laughs> that I yeah. think you just didn't realize. I, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, are you originally from the Georgia area? No, I grew up in Cincinnati. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Go Bengals. Yes, uh, Midwestern girl. Um, went to, got my undergrad at Kent State. Okay. Um, originally was actually going to get a degree in HR, but okay. Kent State got rid of the major at that time, and I ended up, t I was taking a lot of psych classes for whatever reason, Yeah, and that's how I got the, <laughs> the degree in psychology. <laughs> 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 but nothing else outside of you know, right. that and my dad saying, I only pay for four years of school, so, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> had to be motivated. Yeah. If you remember old school parents, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, Midwestern roots mm -hmm. and Kent, Kent, State, Kent State, old school parents. Yeah. Father was like, four years, that's what you got. That's it. And you had to make do, and it kind of like your major found you because mm -hmm. it was just kind of out of necessity. It wasn't, wasn't yes. by choice that, right. that it came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, that's 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 interesting because I, I definitely want to make sure that we we because that, that journey is 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 so similar similar to mine. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in uh, the suburbs of Chicago okay. and uh, went to uh, out of high school, ended up going to Ball State to play football. Mm -hmm. um, and so the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just a different kind of. It's different. It's a different kind of flow than here in the yes, South, very right? Much so. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it took it, it takes some time to it, it, kind of get into the groove of does. what the South is, and so mm -hmm. um, from that, I ended up, you know, uh, my 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 father almost kind of did the same thing to me, mm -hmm. but like my freshman year, he was like, uh, I, mean, I came back, grades were were good, football was going, mm -hmm. and I had a half scholarship. And he looked at me, he was like. Uh, brother, that other half, you got to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was like, wait a minute, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I ended up uh, going into the military. Okay. Finished up at Northern Illinois. Okay. Um, and went into corporate America. Mm -hmm. And you and I have to talk about the journey of corporate mm -hmm. America and how you went from corporate America to small business, mm -hmm. and because it's it's such a similar story, mm -hmm. the more and more entrepreneurs that I talk to have the exact story and the exact reason how they got pushed, mm -hmm. for lack of better terms, yeah. into mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Yep. So when we come back from this break, we're gonna jump into that. All right. That sounds good. All right, folks out there in podcast land, stay tuned. To the next segment because we will be talking about something that will impact your life. All right. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle every career, every smile, every tear. Each family, each friend. It builds and makes us who we are, one community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions and our fears. These are the things that keep us these are the things that make America. 
us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, everybody, you're listening to Eye to Eye, Idea to Invention with Garrett and my missing partner in crime, Cedar Lash. And we happen to have such a great guest today. <laughs> Miss Michelle Jones yeah. is here. And coming out of the previous segment, we were talking about your undergrad and kind of the link between what you went through, what I went through from an undergrad, mm-hmm. how we were both Midwest kids. Um, and so I want to talk about, um, you said that psychology kind of found you. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you got your psychology degree, you end up going into corporate America after that? I did. I went into, um, cause I thought it applied to HR specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did an unpaid internship, if anyone remembers those. <laughs> and, uh, I remember... Uh, working for free for some little government nonprofit agency, mm-hmm. and then working overnight uh, doing data entry uh, to pay some bills. Wow! So um, I don't think I don't think any of our millennials know what free internship <laughs> free? or do a multiple unpaid forty hours. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but was trying to get the resume looking yeah proper um, mm-hmm. and. Um, after maybe after that finished graduated was working little temp jobs yeah. in HR and I had a friend that um, moved to Orlando okay and said hey there's jobs down here why are you still freezing <laughs> and I said that makes sense um, <laughs> so then of course the planning side of me turned into okay let me find another job yeah so that I can save money with that job live off the other one and finally made it down to Orlando. Oh, you, you were hustling from the beginning. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Yes, yes. So you got down to Orlando. Got to Orlando, got a job after about three days at another temp agency, went temp to perm okay. and kind of started the HR path. Yeah. Um, working for a small manufacturer there. Um, Left there, got more into involved in recruiting, mm-hmm. doing some things like that, other HR roles, and actually got into, this is kind of the first sign that th- this is probably not going to work out for you, <laughs> was I got to a young lady who was also, I guess my manager, she was a director, and she used to be the, and no hard feelings to any secretaries who become other roles later. Yeah. Um, but she was just like, Michelle, I just don't understand. We're about the same age and you have much more experience than I do. What, what do you think is mm. going on? I said, good question. <laughs> and from that, that was cue number one, clue number one. Yeah. That this is probably not going to work out for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Off of her ep- ep- epiphany moment. <laughs> yes. Because I was like, hmm, I'm certified and I actually did work in HR and you just planned the Christmas party. So that's kind of a problem. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So after that ended, um, I actually moved into the insurance. That's the first time I moved into insurance. Okay. I was actually working on the workers' comp okay. side of the house. Okay. And so that was interesting because I got to work with a lot of business people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was assigned to what they call the assigned risk pool. So if anyone knows what that is, those are the hard to, um, hard to write folks on the insurance side of the business. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of contractors, a lot of builders. Right. Um, difficult types of business. And so got to l- learn a lot from those guys having to work a lot of deals with keeping their wor- their workers comp so they could stay on the job. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of payment plans so those people could keep oh. working. And so learned a lot about small wow. business for those during those times. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so you, so how long, how long did you work in corporate America? Um, probably total, uh, let's see, I've been on my own for 10 years. So maybe about 13, 15 years. In corporate America. Mm-hmm. So talk through us, I mean, talk to us about that moment in time 
where the transition mm -hmm. happened? Uh, well, like I kind of mentioned before, it's kind of, you know, you kind of have those whispers in the back of your, <laughs> uh, in your, in your mind, mm -hmm. um, personality tests, kind of different conversations that I had. Yeah. Um, I had another role at one point where the, the VP of HR after another, my boss had left. They actually even contributed and paid for my master's said, hey, but we're not going to give you the job. We're still going to mm. go outside and find someone else. So when these whispers keep happening, yes, um, that's when it starts. Okay, what else can I do? Okay. And so after I relocated to Atlanta from Florida, yeah, um, had one one couple last gigs, mm -hmm. and then you know when you get laid off, coming back from vacation, like too much control is happening outside of me. Mm. And so I said, you know what? Let me see. I'm already licensed. Yeah. I know what kind of job I can do with people, yeah. uh, specifically people who are, um, don't have access to large, large group employers, right. and insurance and benefits. So that was kind of my focus, and that's kind of where I took off from there. Wow. Okay, so that's, that's why when, when you had said that initially, I, I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So your layoff came at about a 13 year point. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately enough for you, you were able to, to quickly and naturally migrate into a, a business that was directly linked to your experience. Yes. And mm -hmm. everything that you had done within corporate America and had been trained for, whether it was um, training through university or training through certi you know, certification, mm -hmm. you were able to take that skill set and that knowledge and link it really quickly into mm -hmm. a small business. Correct, yep. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was mm -hmm. really, it, it was probably more of you overcoming what you thought you needed to do to make a small business versus versus mm -hmm. having the skill set, right? Because yeah. there's, there's, there's two sides of it. Mm -hmm. um, people people kind of get caught up on whether or not they really think that they have the ability to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not the fact that they have the skill set and the mm -hmm. tooling yes. to do it, mm -hmm. but whether or not they have the ability to right. do it. Yep. Um, did you have a struggle with that when when that point when that time mm -hmm. happened? Was that even a um. Not really, because I think, and a lot of it might have happened just because of, you know, maturity, mm -hmm. getting in age. Um, but for me, it was just tired of what I used to call the Jedi mind tricks of being in corporate America. <laughs> if you can remember, I mean, some of you guys remember if you may, sat in on meetings, mm -hmm. and um, number one, you're like, why are we having this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> and two, it would be, you know, someone, that, you know, maybe it's a boss or a director or someone wanted to look at, just look at the reactions on mm -hmm. your face. Yeah. And then you have to start playing the actress role of, okay, I'm really listening. This meeting isn't really not, has no purpose. <laughs> right. I already know what I need to do, so let's get back to work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But stop playing those little Jedi mind tricks. I was just like over it. Okay. And so actually coming back and um, getting told that my position was no longer mm. there, I didn't really have like a natural, uh, like a natural fear. Okay. I just kind of was like, okay, well, well, we'll see what else is out there. And then meanwhile, I'm already licensed, so why can't I just do this myself? Wow. And yeah. so... I mean, and there's, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that. There's plenty of mistakes that you'll make along the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> along the way and during the way. And the way. And and during the way. way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it, it's probably been the most fulfilling part of my life has been starting my own Starting business. your own and being your own. Mm -hmm. Because in our situation, I, you know, I mentioned to you that, you know, we were from Chicago and so forth. And um, I had worked in in IT, okay. um, well, started off in mechanical engineering and then kind of transitioned into 
to IT um, with working through Lucent Technologies. And, and then I ended up going into or working at Allstate and understanding mm-hmm. the insurance, but understanding it from a technology side, okay. from an IT, and, mm-hmm. and linking that into working for Bank of America. Okay. Um, and so I was in, in IT leadership within the financial industry for 23 years. Mm-hmm. And when you said you came home after a holiday mm-hmm. and were informed, so was I. Mm-hmm. A few days after Father's Day, okay. my boss calls and literally took her 15 minutes <laughs> yeah. just to get to the point to say, there's been a decision that we've rolled your job, your portfolio, mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. someone else's portfolio. Mm-hmm. And so my my push into entrepreneurship um, didn't have an easy transition, okay. as smooth as yours. Because okay. to me, when I hear your story, mm-hmm. I hear an instant connection to something that you were already doing. Mm-hmm. I was doing IT. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? And, mm-hmm. I, and I mentioned to you that our, our company is a hair accessory company. Okay. <laughs> IT, hair accessory, uh, we own totally different spectrums <laughs> when it comes to industry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but the one thing, one of the things that I had come to realize is that all of the training, all of the skill set mm-hmm. was easily once i once i mm-hmm. once i removed the anger mm-hmm. oh yeah <laughs> once I, oh, yeah. I removed the <laughs> nonsense mm-hmm. and was able to see clearly um it it was one of the best things mm-hmm. that god had done mm-hmm. god had been talking to me he had been talking to me mm-hmm. I would say at least five years about, okay, there's a transition that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Especially when we started the company, I was doing it part-time, kind of had, mm-hmm. had a toe in, mm-hmm. but I was still doing corporate America right. because it was paying the bills. W-2, yeah. Right? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But then when, it, when he was like, okay, yeah, you ain't listening. Mm-hmm. So we're just about to move. We're going to get rid of this. The whispers. Yeah. The whispers. Puss. Yes. <laughs> y'all, if y'all, if, if there's something y'all don't hear, listen, there is whispers. You are hearing whispers. And those whispers can come in many forms, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they could come in the form of internal conversation, internal sound, internal voices that you're hearing. The Holy Spirit could be speaking to you about Look, here's your gift. Use your gift. Or you could have family, friends, and even, like in Michelle's point, coworkers mm-hmm. doing things that, and you're like, why am I here? Mm-hmm. Very much so. You need to listen yep. to the whispers mm-hmm. and take, take stock of what those whispers are saying mm-hmm. and really think about what your next move needs to be. Yes. Totally so, agree. man. Mm, yeah. Ooh, that's, y'all see, <laughs> look, y'all can send me a check for that good <laughs> stuff right there when you get a yes. chance. Yeah. So we're going to come back mm-hmm. into the next segment. We're going to take a break and come back and mm-hmm. um, dive into what you went into and, then the, and, and how you begin to evolve your business mm-hmm. so that people can kind of begin to understand how you went from your skill set, and you instantly went from a, an idea and created a service, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. then we're going to start talking about some of the growing pains, yeah. so forth, right? And then um, I want to, then once we get to understanding the meat of, 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 your, of your business, then talk about how small businesses can benefit from what you provide. Okay. That sounds, sounds, sounds good? good? Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening to us here at Eye to Eye. This is your boy, Garrett. We will talk to you on the other side of this break. 
Peace. Hey there folks out there in eye to eye land. Welcome back, welcome back. This is your boy Garrett here for Idea to Invention. And we are here with Miss Nichelle Jones of Jones Health and Benefits. Yes. So, Miss Jones. Yes, yes. Can you talk to us about, so we, we came out of the last segment with an understanding of where you started, right, and how mm -hmm. you started. Um, but can you now go into, yeah, you know what, you got the notification, you got laid off, mm -hmm. you realize, hmm, I can do this for myself. Mm -hmm. Help us yeah. understand how you went from that point, because you've been in business for 10 years. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and march us through that 10-year timeline from where you were to where you're at, mm -hmm. and some things that we can kind of learn from what to do and what not, not to, to do. do. <laughs> um, I would say the biggest thing um, that I learned was really overall perseverance. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to also be able to adapt. So what I mean by that is uh, when I started, of course, it was immediate. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing was just kind of, I mean, there's a lot of information that's out there online mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but one of the things I had to kind of focus on what exactly I was going into business for and what yeah. to do. And then even while doing that, um, and it, I, I was no longer a W-2 employee. Mm -hmm. So some people may have the ability to transition smoothly over time. If you are not able to transition mm -hmm. smoothly, um, less and less hours in corporate America and more and more in your business. Yeah. You're going to have to be creative um, with still keeping a roof over your head. So yeah. during that time, uh, one of the things I did is I reached out to a LinkedIn group on, uh, for insurance agents and things that they did to supplement their income. Mm -hmm. And one of the, I had a lot of old school agents told me that they did benefit fairs. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, a lot of those benefit fairs in corporate America, they like to have a licensed person sitting at the table yeah. to explain benefits to their employees. And that's something I still continue to do to this day when I have an opportunity to do so. Really? Um, it was just, it was natural. I already knew corporate benefits. So if I have to go in and either present or mm -hmm. sit at a table and explain your medical, your dental, which, whatever you have to you, yeah, it was just natural to just do. Okay. Um, I also, um, I mean, I would also do things like if I was doing business during the day or having to go to a networking event, which is pretty critical. I always tell people if you're doing a small business is networking live and in person, not just by keyboard. <laughs> um, you do have to actually go out there and uh, I kind of call it guerrilla marketing. Yeah. Um, but it basically helps you describe your message, meet people face to face. Yeah. Especially if you're in a business like myself, what I get told to told a lot is I didn't know people like you exist. We do. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, hence, <laughs> hence, hence, hence the, the, the purpose of, of this podcast, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, exactly. People don't know. Well, they don't know. And if you're in a small business and, and you, is you and a couple mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. trying to understand what benefits and who can help you navigate. Yes, right. Because I'm going to let you know. Mm -hmm. We li literally, mm -hmm. um, Part of me is saying, darn it, I wish I would have met Michelle before I signed that contract. Mm -hmm. But yes. we, I mean, we ended up literally just starting off our contract from a benefits perspective um, with a company called Insperity. Mm -hmm. Let me see, you, you give me a smile. <laughs> you ain't supposed to smile like that. 
that okay yeah. for those who cannot see mm -hmm. Michelle gave us a smile like mm -hmm, yeah we need to talk later mm -hmm. that kind of smile like yes. you know, when your mama want to scold you <laughs> like idiot you should have mm -hmm. but see but that's yeah, why that's, that's why we met right yeah, right because exactly. things can change things can change okay I'm sorry yes. I didn't mean to cut you off but no but um I was just saying you I mean during a lot of those those lean years mm -hmm. Because when they say that it takes you three to four, five years to make a profit, it typically will take you that. Not a lot of people just have the home right. run right away, especially yeah. if you're in a service business. Um, so you have to be creative with your time. So d don't be afraid to be humble. Yeah. Look for something that fits around your schedule so you can still market your business by day. Mm -hmm. And you're doing something else, you know, to kind of keep the roof over your head. Yeah. Um, that's it. interesting, something that you're willing to do yeah. while you're building your business. Uh, that was something that, you know, was, was critical for me. Yeah. Um, it, because when you go from being a W-2 to 1099, mm. that's a different lifestyle. It's a different lifestyle. <laughs> so, okay, yes. so let, let's, let's, let's stick there real quick, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say it's a different lifestyle, mm -hmm. what personally for you changed? And the reason reason why I ask that is because I know that my approach, mm -hmm. my thought process had to change mm -hmm. um, because I was so much in a thought process of corporate America. Mm -hmm. And there's a security blanket, if you will. Yep. Right. So your thought process is kind of, hmm, I'm just going to ride this out. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't have to have a, a different level of aggressiveness. Right. So help us understand how, how did your thought process change in that moment? Um, well, basically, when you, you have to make that switch mm -hmm. in terms of being able to uh, just to s sustain living, um, it, it forces you to be a little more aggressive uh, than you normally would. Of course, when you're getting paid every two weeks, <laughs> you may or may not be working in your cubicle those yeah. whole eight hours. Yeah. Um, when you're owning your own business, you're, you're working a lot of hours. You're working potentially over the weekend, overnight. Yeah. Um, you're doing whatever it takes. Um, I had to learn how to time manage better. Um, I did a lot of classes in terms of making sure what gener revenue generating activities am I doing during the day mm -hmm. so I can do my admin stuff late afternoon or in the evenings or the weekends. Okay. Um, and staying focused and disciplined with that because you could very easily start clicking around on your computer. And just be, oh. And be, oh, well, let me... Uh, is that generating <laughs> revenue? Okay. <laughs> so you need to have a poster above, <laughs> above your computer. Is this generating revenue? Because if do, it ain't. If it's not, I have, um, I've been to a couple of different sales meetings and things. Sales was never my background. It was the service side, account management side, the underwriting side. Mm -hmm. And so having to make that switch from being, I kind of call it educating, an educating salesperson. Yeah. Because I like to, you know, let you know what your options are and, and explain why you have those options and why it's important to you. Yeah. So. But do you, do you, would you say that you have more success doing the educated sales direction versus just the... Very much so. Because okay. it allows me to build a relationship. People have an opportunity to see who I am, why mm -hmm. I'm different from a lot of, especially a lot of my colleagues in the industry. Um, outside of just typically looking different than a lot of them yeah. are. Yeah. Um, it is not a profession necessarily a lot of younger people are going into, and so, which is fine. Um, there's a lot of automation that's happening, but you still need to have that human element. People yeah. tell me all the time that I'd rather just hear it from you than read about it. That's, but and you know what, and, and that is, to me, that, that would seem like an obvious thing, because mm -hmm. the way information is being transmitted nowadays, whether it's, you know, whatever social media platform it is, it's it's coming in blurps. Mm -hmm. um, and not many people are re literally reading. Right. Right. That's and so it, I can imagine that it would make your cell a lot easier, at least I know for me, mm -hmm. that if I'm here to talk to you and you say, okay, Garrett, here is this, 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 and this, and this is why you, you mm -hmm. have to go this route. Right. And here's the cost. Mm -hmm. I would prefer that versus you say, here's a link. Read yeah. upon it and let me get back right. to me. Exactly. Okay. You know, I got mm -hmm. a thousand other things going on in my exactly. life. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, man, there were so many questions. Because you brought up the fact that in your industry, 
um, you are probably considered a minority within that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to kind of go back to when you, because I, I, I mean, insurance and, and HR, that whole industry is, is vast. Mm-hmm. What did you do to hone in mm-hmm. on where you wanted your business mm-hmm. to be? Uh, for me, I wanted to specifically work with those folks that are coming out of corporate America okay. or s- similar to me starting their own business. Um, and those segments to me would be uh, those folks retiring um, that are not going to get some crazy, um, ridiculously rich mm-hmm. um, health benefit from their corporate America. They are going to be that individual coming from having their benefits chosen for them for 40 years yeah. to go into Medicare and trying to figure that out on their own. Okay. okay. Um, so working specifically with that population to help them with that transition. Okay. Um, also, and when I talk self-employed folks, again, you're, com- you're looking at COBRA and going, you know, it, this is crazy. <laughs> um, you may not know there's alternatives out there that may work for you yes. until, you know, you can get back to a major medical type plan. Um, and that's what I kind of focus on there, doing alternatives as well as traditional insurance. Okay. Um, and then just for small businesses, really letting them know, kind of working with them to determine when does it make sense mm-hmm. to invest. Um, because it is an investment when you're trying to recruit and retain and grow your business. Yes. You want to make sure you have the benefits in place to attract someone coming from a large company to yours. Yes. And so I specifically kind of concentrate with those folks with under 50, under 100 employees. Okay. Um, because a lot of times the big brokerages, they may work with you and they'll have a small, small group unit, mm-hmm. but you're not going to get that direct someone that really relates to what you're doing also as a small business owner because I'm able to bring the insurance, the HR, and now the business side to kind of help you formulate a plan of when it's it's time, when you're ready to go. Gotcha. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, as a small business owner, Mm -hmm. what's typically the right time? The right time. Um, I s- normally tell people when you've been in the business for maybe a couple of years, mm-hmm. ideally when you, cause that way you kind of settled up on the, on the revenue generating piece, mm-hmm. a little more stability. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And everyone else knows yep, yep, yep. you got to have the stability. Uh, because my, my plan is, is once we start working together, you know, you're not folding your doors later on because right, you're trying to support the benefits right. and you, yeah. Right, okay. So, and then once you have, when you're transitioning some of your employees to full-time, mm-hmm. when they're what I call W-2 full-time employees, maybe okay. 30 or more hours, Yes. Um, even though in the state of Georgia, you only really need two people, I, I find it better, it works better once you get to five to 10, because um, that way you've, you've generated, the business is stable, um, you're on a growing path, um, and you're now trying to really look at um, bringing more people in to take your business to the next level. Okay. Um, so that's where kind of I'm, my sweet spot is, is by between that five to 10 okay. mark. Um, you know, I have, I've had some of my clients that have maybe two, two or three people. Okay. Um, and I continue to have them. I won't let, you know, won't let them go, not yeah. give them the same level of service. Um, but sometimes those companies kind of stay stagnant mm-hmm. and they're cool with just where, where they cool are. Where they're at. Okay. okay. And ideally for me as a business person, I want to grow just like I want to see right. your business yeah. grow. Yep, yep, yep. So when you're adding staff, that's great. Right. And so let me be in place to kind of help you lead you through that part. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, because, you know, I, just from personal, personal experience um, in, in our company, uh, the, the way the way our company is, is divided. So my, my wife Sita, she handles all the marketing side and mm-hmm. the customer facing items. Okay. And because that's just naturally her fit, right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I handle all the business side, the operations, back the office. finance, the back mm-hmm. office, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's interesting, um, like because in corporate America, in in the roles that I had, I had always been trained and, and taught 
at minimum, I'm to at minimum be two to three years down the road. Mm -hmm. And so when I brought this thought process <laughs> into our business, because mm -hmm. um, my wife, to be honest with you, she's, she's always been an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. She had the entrepreneur spirit and that was just normal. She knew she wasn't going to go on corporate America. Mm -hmm. um, but then when, I, when we were blessed to have this transition and bringing in that thought process, I saw, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, uh, we're growing mm -hmm. and need, I needed to put in place or to begin to put in place a structure that had benefits that, to your point, would mm -hmm. begin to attract mm -hmm. the right people, mm -hmm. right? Because as you grow, yep. you know, you, you don't want to, you don't want to have a churn right. mm -hmm. because that takes up time, money, mm -hmm. yes. headache, gray mm -hmm. hair, all mm -hmm. that stuff. All of it. If mm -hmm. you just got churn going on, you want to be able to have something in place to where when you attract the right people, it adds to your stability. Yes. Um, and to be very honest with you, I didn't come into our current situation with the current company that we're with until I was sitting at a table, at a dinner table. Um, I was part of a, um, a CEO round table. Mm -hmm. and, and in the CEO round table, I was the only brother Mm -hmm. The only brother. Mm -hmm. And my friend next to me, mm -hmm. older white guy, was like, Gary, mm -hmm. what are you doing for benefits? Mm -hmm. And his little <laughs> southern drawl, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, Jim, I'm not doing much for benefits right now. Yeah. He's like, but you're growing, ain't you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you need to look into this company. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that the company existed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have no idea that you exist right. mm -hmm. and that your services um, are there to help them. And it's almost like, you know, when you're a small business, when you begin to hit, when you hit that five person threshold, mm -hmm. it's almost like a, you, you kind of have to jump over that bar, right? To mm -hmm. push the growth. Mm -hmm. And one of the things to help you jump over that bar is, preparing HR wise, benefit mm -hmm. wise, payroll yeah. to make sure that that's properly in place. Mm -hmm. So that's a piece of your business that is under control and you can focus on mm -hmm. that hop over the bar. Yes. And, and so that's why mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like, yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. it's just so like, okay, God, wait a minute. What are you trying to, for me to have just recently gone through it and now to talk to you about this, mm -hmm. I know for a fact there's mm -hmm. at least two or three people within my circle that are like, oh, yeah, no, I need that service. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yes. and I, I just, I want, I want hey. people to understand and, and not be afraid mm -hmm. of having the conversation. Right. Definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know they don't know what they don't know. What they don't know. Right, exactly. And this information yes. is, is mm -hmm. not, unfortunately, it's just not freely like, there's, there's, mm -hmm. no, you can, mm -hmm. there's no Google to say, well, small business insurance, and then boop, mm -hmm. and the shell and all these other, right. there's okay. nothing that pops up like that. No, no. So I, want, I thank you. Okay. Because this, yep. yep. this is good. I'm telling you, y'all better send me my check. <laughs> for this yes. good old information. <laughs> exactly. Please. Yes. So we are going to um, take a break and come back in, into our last segment. And then in that segment, um, I'm going to want to hear more of a, of, of a, almost a reiteration of the key, key focuses for your business. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then talk about from an entrepreneur perspective, some of the things that you would like, like if, if, if my, my 10 year old niece came up and said, well, Miss Michelle, Miss Michelle, um, what should I, should I, what should I, and should I not do mm -hmm. as a young entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Give us some of some jewels, okay. some we can, some dime, we can just drop and people are like, I needed that mm -hmm. when we come back. Does okay. that sound good? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you everybody out there in eye to eye land. We will come back after this break. See ya.
What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family. Each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy. Every girl. Each kink. Each curl. We wouldn't change a thing. Because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us, our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, everybody out there for eye to eye. This is Garrett coming to you for this great podcast of information for you. We have our guest, Miss Michelle Jones, owner, president and managing broker of Jones Health and Benefits. Um, and for you all who don't know, right? So timing wise, we are kind of just coming out of open enrollment season. Um, and if you are someone who is currently in corporate America, you understand what open enrollment season means. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are someone who have just, or in the process of making a transition from a nine to five W two type of job in corporate America, and you're trying to do your own thing and you don't, you're wondering about the insurance side of things. This mm -hmm. is the podcast for you. That's right. Miss <laughs> Jones, um, her company, uh, Jones Health, um, Jones and Health Benefits, um, Jones Health and Benefits. Yes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, their website is jonesandhealthbenefits.com. Mm -hmm. um, and you can go to their website and find all the great services uh, that they offer, whether it's for individuals um, or whether it's for employer services. Uh, whether you're doing international health or Medicare, um, mm -hmm. if you're transitioning out of a job and you're, you're, you get that bad letter that says COBRA, and you're like, <laughs> what the heck? And you yes. look at the amount that you got to pay for COBRA, right? If you were in that position, yes. Miss Jones is mm -hmm. the person that you need to speak with. Please do. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Jones, yes. um, can you reiterate and i know i kind of just gave a high level of, mm -hmm. of the areas of focus uh mm -hmm. for your company but uh give us some more information about what you really concentrate on and, and how people can mm -hmm. can find you and, and why they should think about your services okay well first for the on the employer side uh especially if you're a small business owner uh, whether you're um, a solopreneur currently <laughs> or you're in the p process of hiring employees and kind of growing um, your workforce, mm -hmm. um, some of the things that I always tell folks to start thinking about or considering first and foremost is just your baseline health coverage. Um, as we just talked about, open enrollment does end it, but if you were just slammed during open enrollment and couldn't make a decision, there are some alternative plans out there that can kind of bridge you until the next year. I can certainly help you with that. Um, if you're an employer, you actually can start employee benefits at any time. Uh, you're not stuck into the last few months of the year. Yeah. Um, you can start that at any time. So definitely I can provide you some things to think about, um, uh, do what I call kind of a di discovery call, um, see if you're in a position that you're ready to launch benefits because uh, participation is key. Yeah. Um, and I always say even though you as an owner may want to group benefits, you want to make sure you have employees that will be participating so you have group benefits. Yeah really doesn't make sense if it's just you and your wife and you're just trying to 
get anybody. Right. But you got 20 people working there and the other and nobody's, night, and nobody's signing up for it. That's that's not a group benefit plan. <laughs> 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 so you want to make sure you have participation. Um, also, if you're a solopreneur, always think about disability insurance as well. If you don't already have that in place, especially if you have a brick and mortar location, mm -hmm. um, anything that could put you out could definitely put the put the end of your business and for yourself, your employees and things like that. So yeah. I can also do some consultation on that. Um, and then on the individual side, um, let's say you're you're contracting. I have a lot of folks that are in corporate America, but they're not offered offered benefits. Mm -hmm. You took a contract gig. Um, those same individual type plans, bridge plans that we talked about before, I can do those for you as well. Okay. I have some folks out there who, um, as part of their contract, their uh, uh, the contractor will actually help reimburse some of those things. So I can okay. help run quotes so you can kind of price that for them as you're negotiating. Mm -hmm. um, as well as if you're traveling overseas, I always tell people your U.S. domestic policy is just that. Okay, mm. U.S. domestic policy. So... While there's some plans out there that will provide emergency coverage, yeah. um, if something else non-emergency would happen, there's a lot of countries out there that you won't even leave the hospital unless they get their cash up front. Ooh. So you want to make sure you have an international health policy, whether you're working or traveling overseas. Okay. Um, and then, of course, my Medicare folks. Um, I love that population. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, very loyal. Uh, they've been great clients of mine um, and continues to grow to this day. So, the, for like I mentioned before, those folks, you've had your those benefit decisions made for you for a long time, multiple decades at times. Yeah. And so you don't have to feel overwhelmed and go it alone. I can help you transition um, into that. And I can imagine um, from a Medicare perspective, I... Mm -hmm. It's one of the, it seems one of the most tedious things to navigate. It is. And understanding the coverage and the supplemental and uh, what. It, yes. It, it becomes very overwhelming. I've had some people um, call me in tears. I've had people who, Michelle, I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of marketing material that starts probably six months out before you turn 65. And so it gets looks a lot very official, very confusing. Yeah. And so I always tell my folks, once you come to me, you can throw all that away, unless it comes from Social Security office, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do a lot of that legwork for you. Wow. So, okay. So yeah. Well, awesome. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. So, last two two questions. Yes. Um. How do you maintain balance? Mm hmm. Good question. I would say my my two year old helps enforce that um, <laughs> a lot. Um, uh, I would say um, keeping up with my own personal hobbies that I enjoy. Um, yeah. I'm a big NFL fan. I okay. am from Cincinnati, so I will claim the Bengals. And so I porn a show. Yeah, oh. it's it's very <laughs> much so. It's been a sad few years. <laughs> But I will check out on Sundays just to kind of keep up with, you know, the football and things like that. Dancing, salsa dancing is something I okay. enjoy. So do that. Um, you just have to make sure that you incorporate that because it can be um, it can be challenging. You can feel like you're out on an island, um, especially if you are you, you're just starting the business and your friends are planning trips. And, you know, you've got to look at investing in some software to see yeah. if that makes sense instead of going going on vacation. There will mm. be some hard choices, but I can tell you it, it's worth it in the end. So. You got to put on your big girl paint. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. got to make some big decisions. Make some big decisions, yes. Wow. Okay, so then my last question, mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll, we'll move on out. Um, what is your biggest tip that you would give a small business owner? What's, I mean, when you, mm -hmm. and you think about it, you're like, man, that that's it, that that's the tip that would have taken me a long way. What would, th what would that be, mm -hmm. that piece of advice you would provide? Um, for me, for especially employer groups, mm -hmm. is really knowing the right timing to introduce benefits. Okay. Um, and I say that because a lot of times people try to go into it at a rush, mm -hmm. and it's not really successful. Um, whether it's because, again, employees don't want to participate, um, you don't really have the demographic mix that it makes sense in terms of dollars and cents. Yeah. Um, 
but just really knowing when's the best time to actually launch your benefit program because once you start it, you don't right. want to drop it. So no. you want to be able to have a baseline and grow it from there. And so I work a lot with my clients on when to start it, when to add to it, when to enhance it okay. as their staff and their workforce grows from there. Wow. I told y'all mm -hmm. this was a good one. This is a good <laughs> one. Listen, we have been so honored to have Ms. Nichelle Jones, the mm -hmm. owner and president and managing broker of Jones Health and Benefits. Yes. You can find her at joneshealthandbenefits.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, check her out, y'all, because whether you're an individual or a company um, or you need international uh, health, if you know you're traveling abroad because of your business, because of your service, if you're consulting mm -hmm. and you're going overseas, yes. you need to have that in place. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, if you get sick, yes. you can get hemmed up in a whole other country. And Very much so. And be in a world of hurt. Um, and then the, for, for those for our, our, our aging population who happen to have Medicare, mm -hmm. it is a challenge mm -hmm. to navigate. Yeah. So why navigate that by yourself? Navigate exactly. with someone who can hold your hand through it yep. and be that, that sounding board that you need to make sure you have the proper insurance yep. in place. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Jones, thank you so, so much I for being here. I appreciate the opportunity. This was, this was this a was pleasure good. for me. This yes. was good. I appreciate um, it. And so, and I'm, I'm sorry that you couldn't meet my wife, but you will be meeting uh, my wife okay. soon okay. enough. <laughs> so, because um, yeah. we got some things to conversate. But y'all, okay. <laughs> out there in Ida Island, we just thank you and we love you and we appreciate everything that you do for us here at Eye to Eye. And as we always say in parting, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. See you on the other side.